Thank you for joining us. Here at VLC, our purpose is to help people discover and develop a life in Christ. Now here is Pastor Gary Tony. Good to see you guys this morning. Here's the thing. I know I'm, I'm just going to say I'm really proud of you all today. You know, it's spring break, and so it's, it, you know, you know, everybody gets a chance to get out of here. And so good job coming to church today instead of going to the beach. I mean... I don't know. I, I, may, I may have picked beach, but, uh, you know. Anyway, we're in a, a series called Kingship. This is part four. Uh, I, I normally uh, try to keep it uh, a little shorter than that in the series, but I, I actually, I think I have one more Sunday on this. I just haven't been able to, to get through everything. You all listen really good. Let me ask you this before we get into this. How are we doing on our homework? Kind of? Some of you are like, nah, we're going to have to work on that now. Remember, we talked about this. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you actually told the Lord. Didn't we, didn't we pray about this? Uh -huh. Some of you don't even want to answer that. Like, no, nope, I'm not saying that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let's get right into stuff. I, hopefully, I can uh, maybe get everything uh, today in my notes and I can get through this. But we'll see how it goes. It is a series for a reason. But we, we have, uh, just reviewing quickly, we left off with... Uh, Jesus talking to his disciples, which translates to us today as a disciple, yes? See, if you're born again, even if you have not accepted the responsibility of disciple, you still have that calling on your life. Jesus told us, he, he didn't say go make, you know, uh, or get people saved, make converts. He said go make disciples. See, there should be someone in your life that's discipling you, and there should be somebody in your life that you're discipling. That cycle should con continually be going on in our life right now. And this is the thing. Jesus has risen from the grave. He is, remember last week out of the book of Revelation, he has defeated death, hell, and the grave. He actually took the keys of hell from Satan. He, he doesn't even have keys to his own house anymore. And when he left the planet, before he did, he gave us an assignment. And in Matthew 28, uh, most theologians call this the Great Commission, but he says this in verse 18, all authority, say that. When he was talking to his disciples, he said, all authority has been given to me, watch this, in heaven and on the earth. So who has the authority? Now, now, now hang on, I know we do, but y'all are getting ahead of me. Look, put, look, read it again. All authority has been given to who? Capital M-E. Jesus is talking. Now, yes, we are in Christ. So, yes, we are the one that he has authorized on the planet. But ultimately, it is him and we are to be his representative. He is to flow through us. The only way you will ever operate in your God-ordained authority is through him in you. Not just us doing our own thing, not just us doing some religious denominational philosophy, but actually doing what Jesus told us to do. And right before he left the planet, he, de the planet, he delegated that authority to disciples. And that's the thing that you and I have to be open to today is our role as part of the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> we have this kingship. We've been given this assignment by Jesus himself. Remember last week we told you this in John chapter 14. Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you that he who believes in me. Now, you know I drive this home every time I get a chance to talk to you. But I cannot overstress the importance of believing. Not knowing, believing. There is this vast difference between the two. The thing that I encounter the most in the body of Christ as a pastor, and, and I've done this now for a few years, is that we are, we are good at knowing what the Bible says. I have people tell me that all the time. Oh, I know, I, I know that. And I'm like, mm. but what's, what about do you believe it? See, it's, it's not just knowing, guys. I mean, we live in an information age. You can pull up anything on your smartphone in a minute and read it. Say, oh, yeah, I know that. It's not, it's not the knower. You actually have to believe the words of Jesus. The first thing you have to believe is this, that the Bible is him talking to you today. It's not just a religious book. That actually frustrates me when I hear people tell me that the Bible is a religious book. No, it's not. 
It's, it, it, there's no religion in it. As a matter of fact, Jesus despised religion. The Pharisees were the picture of religion. He said, stay away from them. He said, you're of your father, the devil. Can you imagine some radical dude showing up with his robe and long hair and sandals and t tells the preachers of the day, well, you're of your father, the devil? And sometimes he would do it in church service. No wonder they wanted to kill him, right? But he makes this statement. He says, most assuredly, I say to you that he who believes in me, the works that I do. So it's not just believing in him. You got to believe in the works that he does. He says, you believe in the works that I do, you'll do them also. What about that? You like that? How many of you believe that? But what about, what about when you don't see it in your life? Do you still believe it? Some of you got your good church answer. But, but most of us, we're wait and see kind of Christians, aren't we? Well, if you're a wait and see Christian, then you don't believe. If you're a wait and see Christian, then you don't believe. Because you're waiting to get a confirmation. That's not believing. I'm not, I don't have to believe you're coming to church today. I see you. You're here. I, I don't have to believe it. Now, this morning, because it was spring break, I was believing for somebody to come. But now that you're here, I, there's no believing necessary. You're here. So you've got to believe when you follow Jesus and you see him do some of the radical things he did. I think one of the things that we lack today is the courage to step out and even try. You know it? We have been authorized by him to do the works that he did. In the Gospel of Luke, he actually says this, that I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. See, guys, we don't have authority over other people. Unless you're married, then your, your, your wife may have, a, she's probably, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm definitely the boss when she's not around, though. <laughs> right? Yeah. He said, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And then Jesus tells his disciples in John chapter 13, he who receives whomever I send receives me. So now here's the thing about that. So many times we're not just sent we just went. You got to be sent by Jesus. You need to be led of the Lord. See, there's some people, there are some people Jesus told his followers, don't go there. Well, I'm supposed to go to anybody. You are, you're, you are supposed to go to anybody, but anybody led of the Lord. Amen. How many of y'all think the Lord knows who's ready to receive what you got? He will, he will actually prepare the heart of somebody for you to go sow the seed of his kingdom into their life. So that you just can't go in your break room and just open up and start preaching the Bible to everybody because they'll just shut you down. You have to be open to the leading of the Lord. Remember this, and this is where you all were right. We have the authority. We're in him. Because, see, if you're doing your homework, you're going to get some of this revelation of who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you. Us in him, him in us. We have been crucified with him. We are more than conquerors in him. We are joint heirs in him, seated in heavenly places with him. How's that work? Because I'm here. How can I be seated in heaven? I didn't write it. But that's what the apostle Paul says spiritually. See, I need you thinking other dimensional today because even though you are confined to humanity, you are way more than a human. I'm going to show you some things today and hopefully it'll give us some, some clarity on some of this. But Going back to our homework in Colossians chapter 1, and, and we've talked about this briefly in, in other sessions, but in verse 15 he says this, that talking about Jesus, that he is the image of the invisible God. What? what? Did y'all know God was invisible? You can't see God, right? He's invisible. But he can be seen through creation, through us. And in Jesus, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the, say it with me, firstborn. He's the firstborn. Now, interesting thing, if you, before uh, Jesus was risen from the grave, if you go back through the Old Testament and even through the Gospels, he's not called firstborn there. He's the only begotten of the Father in the Old Testament. 
But once he's resurrected, he's no longer the only begotten of the Father. Now he's the firstborn. Why? Because there's a second. There's a millionth. There's a billionth. Huh? Yeah. He was the first. But he is the image of what God looks like. That's why he made statements. Hey, guys, if you've seen me, well, you've seen the Father. And then it says this, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth. All things were created in heaven, on earth, all things visible and See, there's invisible stuff, guys, that, that's real, that Jesus made that you and I can't see. Then he talks about thrones and dominions and principalities and powers. He, these are just simply different ranks and order in the spirit world. There is rank and order. This fallen world that you and I live in, the things that are set up and how it operates, is, is really made from that world. It's just in a fallen state. There will be order in your next chapter. You will have an assignment. Jesus said, I prepared a place for you. I'm coming back with my reward for you, for the things that you do. Not getting to heaven. Getting to heaven is not your reward. You're born again. Your reward is for what you do on the planet in your born again nature. Y'all with me? See, I think sometimes we don't grasp the fullness of all Jesus made available for us who we really are in him. So as I was putting this talk together and, and I came across this passage a few months ago and I brought it up and I thought, I'm, I'm going to highlight this a little bit today because it's going to, the first thing it's going to do, obviously, it will most definitely kick your religious sacred cow. Without a doubt, it's going to get you. Some of you are going to struggle with it, especially if you're bound up in religion. And if that's you today and you have been raised in religion and some of this stuff is, is different for you, j just sit there and be open and ask the Lord. If you're, here's the thing. If you're struggling, struggling with some of the things that I'm talking about, because I understand the Apostle Paul made statements like this. I fed you with milk and not solid food because you weren't ready because you're still a baby. Now, I'm not saying you're a baby, but this is not milk. This series is more of a solid food. So if you don't understand all the stuff I'm talking about, then take these things. Some of my leaders, there are sermons that I've listened to dozens and dozens of times. And I take notes on it and I meditate on it because there's a revelation in that talk that I don't see. But so often what we do is we assume because we've arrived at this level of intelligence that, oh yeah, I got that. Mm, do you? Because Jesus said you'll know a tree by its fruit. Yeah. So when you begin to walk in some of these things and, and the revelation begins to settle actually who you are, this is why Paul made statements like, guys, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Because when you begin to get the revelation of who you are, you are as an heir to the throne of heaven. You ever met that haughty Christian that thinks they know it all? Yeah. They're never fun to be around, are they? Yeah. Don't be that person. All right, let's get into it. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. Now, this is God speaking, and he says this. And I can hear God talking because you understand God is talking to the judges that he appointed in the Old Testament. And, and we'll break this down because if you just read this passage, you're like, what? God says it like this. I said, you are gods. And, and people are like, we're gods? Psalm 82. I'm reading, the, I'm reading the Bible, okay? I said you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, what he is talking about, first thing you have to understand, God is correcting the Old Testament judges that he appointed, that he called to execute his authority on the planet in that time in history. He sent judges. If you've read the Old Testament, you know what I'm talking about. The problem is, just like everybody else in the Old Testament, just like all of us, the judges failed. And instead of obeying what God told them to do, they were giving in to the ways of the world around them. And they were influenced by the world more than they were God. And instead of obeying God's commandments, they were listening to the things of the world. And they weren't walking in, listen, they were not walking in their God-ordained authority. Let me take a second, because this authority 
It, one of the words, when you look it up, you'll find it also, and I thought this might help today, it means jurisdiction. And I begin to think about it. You know, uh, my, uh, of course, I didn't have a lot of time with my dad, but my dad was a police officer. And uh, I was thinking about that. And of course, Trevor, he, he used to be an officer. He's retired now and he's got a new career. But I, I remember talking with Trevor about, you know, the authority that came with the position. For example, Trevor would have to deal with semi-trucks a lot of times with, 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 you know, people on the interstate. Now, Trevor's big, but he can't stop a semi. All right? He doesn't have the power to stop a semi. But because of his jurisdiction, his authority, all he has to do is hit the blue light. And the truck driver, because of his authority, because of, are you getting this? Because of his jurisdiction, his assignment, that big old truck would pull over. Huh? See, guys, you need to understand, you may not have the power in and of your humanity to stop the kingdom of darkness, but, but you have been authorized. And because of the jurisdiction that you have on the planet, now you're the one that runs the show, should you choose to accept your assignment. You getting this? These judges, they were not, they were not fulfilling their God-ordained assignment. And that's why he was dealing with them. Now understand, when, when I say this, I'm not talking about, when, I, when, when in this word gods, when, he, when the Lord says that you are gods, he's not speaking from deity. You understand? There's only one El Shaddai. There's only one Almighty. But he is talking from a uh, authority position, you know, who, who God has ordained them to be. <clears throat> I mean, think about it this way, for example. Dogs have dogs. Cows have cows. I'm not a biologist, but <laughs> humans have humans. What does God have? What's God have? Now, you, you, you got to take this with a grain of salt. You have to understand what he's trying to get us to see today is our position that he has brought us into as an heir of Christ. If we're in Christ and he's in us, that makes us one with him. See, they, those judges, they failed to fulfill their assignment. And what he's doing is he is reminding them of who they are. And so now let's bring this into uh, the New Testament, okay? Let's look at our new covenant and let's go back to Jesus' statement when he said, all authority has slide me up. Is it broke? Technology, man. You got to love that, right? I know y'all thought I had this stuff memorized, but I don't, man. <laughs> I have a wonderful team back there that takes care of me. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And then he dele delegated us to go. He has given us kingship on the planet. He's given us the authority, the position, the dignity, the responsibility of the king. He said, I'm, that's why he said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. But here's the deal. Everything about this reality, it all hinges on this truth, this revelation that we got a, a few weeks ago when Jesus told Peter, they were asking the question and he says this, who do you say I am? That's the question for you to, today. Who do you say he is? At the end of the day, see, for some people today, Jesus is simply an insurance policy from hell. And praise God for that. But man, is he so much more than that. He will be right there with you in every situation. He will empower you. He will actually back up the words that he told you to go do. And when, when Peter got this revelation of who the Christ was, in Matthew 16, this has been our key text throughout this talk. Then Jesus made this statement. He said, now I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth 
will be loosed in heaven. You see, you have something to say about what's going on on this planet. So according to this statement that Jesus made, I can't help but wonder if this is what he was referring to back when he was teaching his disciples. And he said this, guys, pray this way, that the Father's will be done on earth. How? As it is in heaven. How many of y'all, how many of y'all believe the will of God's being done in heaven? We don't question that, do we? Now, we, don't, we, we can't go there to find out yet, but we, don't, we, we believe what God says, right? But now, on, and here's the thing, if God's will was automatically happening on the earth, then why would Jesus tell us to pray for his will to happen on the earth if it's automatically going to happen? It's not. I know a lot of people talk that stuff, but it's not, guys. So never make the mistake of just assuming when it comes to prayer you know, because Jesus was talking, well, ask the Father that his will be done on earth. But there is so much more involved in prayer than just asking God for things. Prayer really is our, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's our system of navigating the unseen world that God, the invisible God, you understand? Are, you, are you with me? I'm going to show you here shortly. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not get in too much of a hurry. You see, According to <clears throat> the New Living Translation, whatever we allow here is allowed from heaven. That authority, that jurisdiction has been given to the body of Christ. And so if you want things to change in your community, then yes, number one, start praying for them to change. Number two, get involved. When he gave the disciples an assignment, he didn't just say, hey guys, y'all go gather around the fire and just pray. He told them to go. Go do something. Go tell people what's happening. Go tell people who I am. Go tell people what I can do. And according to the Great Commission's, uh, Mark's version of that, Jesus would confirm his word that they went and said and did with signs following. See, sometimes you need to step out on the word and, and trust Jesus to confirm it in somebody else's life. See, this kind of living is way different than just begging God to do something. And even though his kingship is available for all the born again, its realities will only be seen in those that make the effort to be one of his disciples. So you have to say yes to your assignment. You have to take steps of faith. When God gives you a revelation, listen carefully, because we're all at different places in our journey of faith. So when God gives you a revelation out of the word about a certain truth, at that point, he didn't give it to you to see what you would do. He gave it to you to do. He's not testing you. I know they tested in the Old Testament. No, God put something on your heart for a reason today. That thought that keeps rolling around in the back of your head, maybe I should do that. God, is that really you? No, he just wants to play mind games with you. No, that's really him. He loves you. He, I'm telling you, in all of your junk, in all of your brokenness, on the other side of your biggest failure, God loves you. You can't do anything to make him not love you. He loves you. And because of that, he is constantly calling you. Come on back. Come on back. Yeah, but Lord, you know how dumb I was this weekend? I know. I knew you was going to do it before you did it, and I'm still calling. Come on. I, I still went to the cross for you, too. Come on back. See, Understand, this, this new life, this kingdom reality, it's never from an, an earning standpoint, but it's from a transforming standpoint. That's the whole point in Romans chapter 12. That's how you prove the will of God in your life, by allowing it to transform who you are, because then you become a doer of what the Lord revealed to you. In Colossians chapter 3, we touched on this. I, we may have. I don't know. I've been all over Colossians through this talk. But it says this in Colossians 3, 1, since you have been, what's that mean? It's already done. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits, where are you supposed to set your sights? on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Watch this very carefully. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. Now, what are you supposed to do with a scripture like this? Because God knows that you 
have families, that you have careers, you have responsibilities. So he's not saying to put your head in the sand. What he's wanting us to understand, even though we are confined to humanity on this planet, he's, he's saying, hey guys, I need you to think about heavenly stuff. It needs to be more of a reality. And I'm telling you, for us today, for the, the 21st century Christian, we need to be able to sit down at a restaurant, at a coffee shop, and have intelligent conversations about spiritual stuff. Not just, your, not just the milk of the word, not just the religious three steps of here you go, how to be a good person. Now, you should already have that by now. But we don't. <laughs> but God knew that. You understand, God used a donkey one time. Hey, donkey. You know, donkey. He used a donkey. So we're candidates, right? But you have to start thinking about heavenly things. He says this, for you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ. Your real life. You remember us in him? Him in us? I know when, when I, even when I make those statements, I know intellectually that makes no sense. But spiritually, you have to see yourself in a different dimension. You are a spirit being right now. See, I really believe that our talk is going to bring some clarity. And it's going to bring some clarity concerning our heaven and earth connection. Because if I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, where I go, he goes. What about where he goes, I go? Now, obviously, I, my, my, I can't leave physically, right? You remember last week, I mentioned this. The Apostle Paul, talking, you know, he's talking about the whole family in heaven and in earth. Yeah? And I talked about Paul having this experience in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We never really got into it. And I thought, well, let's talk about that today a little bit. Remember, he went to heaven. Let's, let's look at it. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul says this. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. So third heaven means what? There's a one and a two. Okay. He says, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. But God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or out. I, I, Paul didn't know. This experience that, ha that happened with him was so real that he could not discern if his body went with him or not. But, but I, I'm, I'm going to help you with this in a little bit. He did say this, though. But, but I do know that I was caught up to paradise. Now, Paradise is the third heaven. Paradise is where our, our family members live in heaven right now. Paradise is this wonderful place. I think, I think paradise in heaven was what Eden was supposed to be here. Just my personal opinion, you know. But he says, I was called up to paradise, and I heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. You know why? Because if, you got the, if we had the full revelation of that life and we're a part of it now, we, nobody would stay here. Nobody would stay. But you have to have choice. By design, God gave his creation free will. He wants a family that picks him. But if he made us to see all that there was there, there would be no choice anymore. That would be out the window. Because there's no, you, you, would, you, would, you couldn't turn it down. See, we connect right now, you know, to this world a little bit more, even though, according to the scriptures, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to keep this as simple as I can because I know it can get out there. And like, what's that got to do with me today? It has everything to do with you today because when you know who you are, and you know that the Christ is in you and that, that part of your life, every time you show up, he shows up. When he shows up, it's this back and forth world that's, that's constant. You're part of it right now. We're connected to that world right now. It was such a reality that Paul didn't know. He didn't know if he was in his body or not. What? But he went there. Let me, let me there's a beautiful picture of this in Luke 16. Because that world, I, I need you leaving here today with, with a fresh perspective on that world. 
and, and thinking about it. Because Colossians told us to think about heavenly stuff. We're having this talk so that you'll think about heavenly stuff, okay? But in Luke chapter 16, there's this cool story of a rich man and Lazarus. I know many of you know the story, but they both die. And the Bible says that the rich man was buried and Lazarus was carried off to paradise by angels. Not the same experience for both. And then all of a sudden, Jesus takes us through a window and we get to see the other side of what's going on there. <clears throat> and the Bible says that the rich man in hell looks over to paradise and sees Lazarus. Now their bodies are in the ground. Y'all with me? But this guy recognizes Lazarus on the other side. See, your spirit, I need you to get this today, you are a spirit being, right? And your spirit is you. You are you. And your spirit looks like you. It has your personality. I know a lot of people are like, oh no, man, I want a different personality when I get to heaven. <laughs> well, you better start working on it now. Because you are you. Listen, they recognize each other. This guy's in hell. I believe, that's, I, I believe that's going to be part of the torment. You ever gone past a house at night? Curtains are open and all the lights are on. You can see everything going on in the house. But if you're in the house with all the lights on, you can't see nothing in the dark, can you? Yeah. I believe that's going to be part of the torment that those people have, that people in hell, because the, he sees what's going on there. He recognizes Lazarus. He asks Lazarus if he, if he was dip his finger, finger, now it's a spirit, if he'll dip his finger in water so he can put some on his tongue because he's in torment. He's talking about, all, are y'all getting the picture here? They look the same, they act the same. You remember on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, who showed up? Moses and Elijah. Now wait a minute. <laughs> right? Now Elijah wasn't dead. Moses was, but Elijah wasn't. Elijah, he just took a chariot ride to heaven. Right? Y'all remember the story? I wonder if that really happened. See, that's the thing I want you to understand. This is Paul's point in Colossians. We need to think about this kind of stuff. See, it doesn't have to be this weird mystical thing. But we have to be able to really be open to some of those realities as a spirit being. And, and you know that this world is just a little window of time. That's why Jesus made this statement in Matthew 16. You have complete access, free access to God's kingdom. You have keys to open any and every door. Watch this. No more barriers between heaven and earth. Now, I hear goofy stuff sometimes. People think that they could talk to friends and loved ones on the other side. Nah, I don't see that in the Bible. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to talk to their angel. Mm, I don't see that in the Bible either. Tread lightly with that crazy stuff. Because there is a real enemy that would love nothing better than to, comp than to accommodate you with some of that stuff. The Bible says that Satan himself can appear as an angel of light. So don't play, don't play around with that stuff. See, obviously Jesus isn't talking about our humanity. He's talking about our spiritual bodies. Peter calls it our inner man. That's who we are in Christ. But here's the thing, guys. We, you know, every one of us, we, we come to a day that, you know, we're going to face these realities. That th this earthly temple, it's going to, it's going to shut, it's going to be done. Huh? So Paul is wanting us aware of this so that we can set our sights on the realities of heaven. We can think about heaven. We can talk about heaven. When, you know, when you're comfortable talking about heaven with people, it won't be this weird thing anymore. What I've discovered over the years is a lot of people, we just struggle talking about anything related to Jesus. And we need to get more, <clears throat> more comfortable about it. We need to think about heavenly things more often. I mean, Paul, my man was caught up to paradise. So... Think about that for a second. He was having a conversation with the Lord. <clears throat> We're not just human, you all. Now, at present, part of Christ's body, we're with him, seated in heavenly places. We're blessed with every spiritual blessing with him, right? 
But here's the thing. When you begin to think about our role here and our influence with people, when you begin to share some of these things, when you could tell people about the realities of heaven and let them know that this is something that we have to look forward to, this is part of our eternity. Remember what Paul said, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know, man. But it, it, you got to keep this part in mind that we're not just human. Can I show you something? Uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> now, as I was thinking about this talk and sharing about the realities of heaven and what some of that stuff looks like, uh, the Lord brought me to this passage because Paul is trying to describe to this young church some of the realities of the other world. And in chapter 15, I, I'm, if you have some time, go check it out. But I'm just going to highlight a few verses in this. But in verse 40, the Bible says this, that there are bodies in heaven and bodies, say bodies, on the earth. And the glory of heavenly bodies is different from the glory of earthly bodies. Now it goes on, Paul goes on to talk about, and he uses the heavenlies as an example. And he says, there's, there's, there's the glory of the sun and the moon, and there's the stars. And he says the, star, he says the stars actually differ in glory. And then he makes this statement, and it'll be just like this in the resurrection. What's that mean? That means you and I are going to differ in glory some of, some of you are going to have higher positions than others because of the things you did here on the planet. Remember last week we talked about this out of uh, the, the uh, Gospel of Luke where Jesus shared the parable. He told the young man, he said, you've been faithful in a little. I'm going to make you a ruler over 10 cities. Is that real? You guys, you got to get this. This thing that we're doing here, it's, it's going to be over like that. And this is what Paul is wanting this young church to understand. He goes on to say that, you know, talking about bodies again, he says there are bodies, natural human bodies, they're buried, but they will also be raised as spiritual bodies, just as there are natural bodies. You, you getting this? They're, they're one and the same. You're you. Earthly people are like earthly men, verse 48. Heavenly people are like heavenly men. What about that? I wonder what my heavenly man is like. He's like me. Now, obviously, I'm believing for heavenly hair. <laughs> no doubt. But, you know, I, I think that my heavenly man will be me glorified, though. What Paul is wanting us to be aware of so that we can have conversations with people and we can encourage people. Guys, I know things may, may seem difficult sometimes here. But this is what we have to look forward to. You know, this, this graduation day. And he talks about these things in chapter 15. And then he makes this interesting, Daryl, he makes this interesting statement in verse 51. He says, let me reveal to you this wonderful secret. We will not all die. What? Hold up. We won't all die. But we will all be transformed. Watch this. And it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. What the heck, man? I mean, you ever read a scripture and, you, and you're like, what the heck, man? No, it's just me? Yeah, when I read this, see some of y'all, you're, you're like, obviously we need to have this talk then. Because here's what's going to happen. This thing that Paul's talking about, now when that's going to happen, I don't know. It could, you know, I, I, I would love for it to happen in my lifetime. I'd like to experience that. But if it doesn't, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We win either way. 
But there is going to be this group of people that's just going to transform at the blink of an eye. And you're going to put on immortality right here on the planet. Is that crazy? But before that happens, the dead are going to be raised. The, the, those people that are in paradise right now, there's, my mom's spirit is going to come back and get her Aunt B body. I see my mom, was, she was like Aunt B. So she'll be a glorified Aunt B. You're talking about some cooking, man. Woo! Huh? And this, this stuff is going to happen. I need you to leave here today with the reality. Christianity is not just this kumbaya moment where we just have this assurance in the back of our mind. Well, praise Jesus. Someday in the sweet by and by when the roll is called up, y'all. No, 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 no. I need this to be a reality today in your life. You are people of God today. And you have this opportunity, this window right now to make an impact in other people's lives. And when you can sit down and tell them about heaven, when you can sit down and you can tell, hey, guys, let me tell you, there's something getting ready to happen. You know, we're, we're the closest group to this happening of any people of, of, the, of the history of the church. We're the closest ones. Tomorrow's not promised to anybody. What if, Cody, what if it happened this afternoon? Now, now listen, I know we say it'd be awesome, but we all know people here that aren't. Come on now. We all know people. We don't know where they're at right now, do we? So I know we think, man, that'll be, it will be awesome for us. But the moment it does, you're going to be like, oh, but what about? So if you thinking, what about so-and-so now? Then don't wait for that day. Go get what about so-and-so and serve up a big dish of this to him. Come on, you all. We, we can't wait. Here's the deal. And, and, and when you do it, you go, you, you go, how many of you are going to do this stuff? I got, I got two people. <laughs> Listen, guys, I know it's comfortable just enjoying our, our Bless Me Club. I get it. But those, we can't do that anymore. We're living in a time in history where people are being so deceived by everything in this world. You know what they need? They need truth. They need the light of the gospel, and it flows through us. And the closer you walk with Jesus, the more you're aware of some of these things. When you do your homework, revelation comes off that page of who you are in him and him in you, called and anointed and appointed by him for such a time as this. That's why God was getting on the judges. He said, I said you're God's, but, you, but you're going to die like me because you're not doing what I told you. If you go read that story, he's getting on them because he called them for a specific assignment. Guess what? You are called for such a time as this for a specific assignment. And when you have the realities of what's going on in the heavenly realms and you're comfortable with that and you can have conversations about it, then all of a sudden the things of the Bible are not this weird, mysterious thing anymore because you know who you are. And out of your belly, your inner man will flow rivers of living water and it will change somebody's life. And you don't have to sit around and wait. You just go sow the seed of the kingdom of God and then walk away. See, so often we try to prove God. You got to quit that junk. You just get in the way. See, Jesus wants us to understand these spiritual realities. Our assignment, according to our king, is this. Because he's given us the authority to bind stuff, kingdom of darkness stuff, not people. Lord, I pray against so-and-so. Lord, I... I bind her up. I bind him. Stop that junk. No, 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 no. It doesn't work anyway. <laughs> so many Christians, we've tried stuff over the years, and the world's looked at us like, man, you're just goofy. And in their defense, we, we were just trying to do crazy stuff. Quit that junk. Find out who you are. Begin to exercise your spiritual authority. When you go into a situation, you remember your jurisdiction. Remember we were talking about with Trevor with, with his badge and uniform and blue light. Man, just, you just hit your blue light, man. Go in there and know who you are. Tell the powers of darkness, stand, today you stand down. I'm doing kingdom work today. Like, Why well, doesn't even make sense? It's not of the senses. This is how I operate every day in my life. When I go into a situation, today I take authority over the kingdom of darkness in my jurisdiction. What do you think that meant when Jesus said, I give you all authority over the power of the enemy? What do you think that means? Well, Lord, I hope you can do something here. No, 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 no. There is nothing. He can't do nothing there because you're not doing anything. 
But once you know who you are, and you, you find this person that you're getting ready to sow the kingdom of heaven into their life, you go before, you use your words. Are you getting this? See, Jesus is building his church today with, with us. He's advancing his kingdom with every one of us that's willing to accept our role to exercise our God-ordained authority over the powers of darkness to be living epistles on the planet right now led by his spirit. See, this is the biggie right here, guys. Romans chapter 8 says it like this in verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And the reason that they use the word sons here instead, instead of children, is because it alludes to maturity. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are, are the mature ones in the Lord. You are able to recognize God's voice in your life. Now, I'm not talking about hearing words you understand. You can recognize His voice leading you. And then He says this, those that are led by the Spirit are sons of God. And then He says this, for you... Did not Now, this is going to help somebody today. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, or like a little child would they, today, they would just cry out, Daddy, Daddy. That's what God wants from us. Paul says it like this, I ha God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and a sound mind. James says, submit to God, resist the devil. Submit to God, resist the devil. So sometimes the, the, the devil you're resisting is the spirit of fear. You have to resist it because he hasn't given you the spirit of fear. I just hit the back wall right there. Listen, I, I, I need you to, to listen to me for just, I'm, 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 I'll get you out of here with this, but you gotta take this home with you today. In the last two years, I have watched the spirit of fear manipulate our nation to it almost crippled it. Now, I, I know we, we sat here in church today and say, yeah, but we didn't do a thing. Really, in the beginning, we just gave into it. And it was nothing more than a spirit of fear. You better, you better get this today because it is still wreaking havoc in our nation. I talk to people, they are, they are still terrified of something. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Listen to this. I'm going to quote Jesus for a second. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Now, what, what did Jesus say? Let not your heart be troubled. Who's, got, who, who's the one that's going to do that? Some of y'all don't even want to answer it. You don't, like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. You know, I, I don't, no, you. Jesus gave you the authority. So it's up to you to resist the devil. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. And then the enemy will, the enemy will come with symptoms and tragedies and fears. And what about this? And you're never going to be able to do that. And you'll never come out of that. And you've always done that. And he'll just bombard you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it. Don't let it. Yeah, but I can't help it. <laughs> Don't even get me started on it. You know better than that. You've got the same Holy Ghost inside you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Well, how do I do that? By taking authority over that spirit of darkness. God has not given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of power. But the problem is, listen, the problem is, Jack, we give more attention to the fear than what God said. We, we think that when, when all of a sudden something in the kingdom of darkness wants to manifest, we, th we give him more credit than we will God. Yeah, but what if the devil does it? Are you for real right now? He is defeated. The only thing he can do in your life is what you allow. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He hadn't given you one. I can't let go of this right now. Man. And I'm not, listen, I'm in the same boat because I get scared too. And then I tell my head, you shut your mouth. Huh? 
Don't let your heart be troubled. I'm not, Jesus, thank you. I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. I quote the daggone thing. And then I go to verse 27 of John 14. Because in verse 27, Jesus says this. Peace I leave with you. Cody, my peace. I'm giving you, I'm, I gave you my peace. You got my peace. The problem is we don't want to pick up Jesus' peace. We want to pick up the devil's fear. We want to entertain, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't happen? Come on, man. My peace I give you. Now watch this. Not as the world gives. See, he's not going to give it. You can't go to Target and get this on sale. Mm -mm. It's, it's your inner man. It's got to come from your spirit. And the only way that transformation takes place is when your soul gets renewed, according to Romans 12, to the things of God. Then you're thinking the things of God. You're thinking the things of heaven. You're talking the things of God. And all of a sudden you're thinking and talking, begin to line up. The next thing you know, spiritual realities are manifesting in your life from heaven on this planet. Why? Because you are loosing the things of heaven in your life. Y'all getting this? Yeah. And then he, say, he, says, I, he says, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, do I give. And then he says it again. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Now, so who's the one that's got to not let it be? Us. Don't let it. Now, I promise you today, some of y'all have been fighting this stuff. Guess what's waiting on you, right? I mean, you might not even get out. You, it, he may be wearing you out right now. The enemy will just, he, he's getting ready to pounce on you with fear. Well, you know, I know what the preacher said, but uh, don't, don't even let that stuff, no, 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 no. God hadn't given me a spirit of fear. I'm not going to give place to fear. I am not going to give place to fear. I guarantee you, if you could sit down with Trevor and talk to some of the things, I I'm, I'm, I'm guarantee you as a police officer, there are times you just got to tell your head, shut up. I'm going in there. Why? Because it's my job. It's my jurisdiction. I got the badge. There's a new sheriff in town. Glory to God. <laughs> huh? But until you think this way, you will never, you will, now you wonderfully saved and you're going to live a good Christian life. Or you can be this overcoming more than a conqueror that God has called you to be. See, Romans chapter 8, 16 says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children of God, then we are heirs of God. And if we're heirs of God, then we're joint heirs with Christ. If, well, I don't know why they had to, I don't know why they had to throw this last thing in there. If we suffer with him. Huh? Sometimes the suffering that you got to do is putting your flesh down. You're not going to suffer like Jesus on the cross. You can't. All right? Nobody, nobody else can do that. That's not what this is talking about anyway. The suffering that Jesus went through was putting his flesh down and obeying. That's why he, he, he sweat great drops of blood in the garden. He said, he, he cried out, Abba, Father, Dad, is there any other way? Is there any other way we can do this? And then he said what? Not my will, but yours be done. See, everything about this talk, Everything about it. As an heir of God, it all hinges on this one simple question. Who do you say he is? Who do you say he is today in your life? Is he just your insurance policy from hell? Or is he your king? Is he the Lord of lords? Is he the master of your life? Do you say yes when he calls you to, to do something? Can you even hear? Where is your relationship at? See, God wants you at a place today where you can hear the voice of God in your spirit, not with your ears, but in your heart. And you know that's God telling you, yeah, go share the gospel with that person in the break room. Yeah, but what if they make fun of you? So what? Listen, the brighter you burn for Jesus, they're going to do more than make fun of you, buddy. You better get that. What God is looking for is people who know who they are and can exercise their God-ordained authority. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And he has commissioned us to go out and advance his kingdom. He has given us his royal kingship. 
So today, for every one of you here, be bold in it. Let all that junk about what if I don't do it all right, let that go. You're not going to do it all right. I, don't, I definitely don't do it all right. Don't worry about that. You think Peter did it all right? Lord, if that's really you, you tell me to get out of the boat and I'm going to come. Now, now, here's the thing. My man got out of the boat. He actually walked on water until he didn't. <laughs> you, you getting this? See, there, you're, you're going to sink. You're going to fail. You're going to blow it more times than you want to talk about. But that's when you get up and brush yourself off. God hadn't given me a spirit of fear. Mm -mm, no. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. Huh? He is leading me. My steps are ordered of the Lord. I hear God's voice clearly. He is armed me with strength. He surrounds me with favor. I do the things that Jesus tells me to do. I may not do them all right, but I'm going after it. Yeah. Trust him today. Now, here's the thing. This kind of life, it starts with this first simple act of faith. You got to belong to Jesus, man. You don't have to be a member of Victory Life Church. I mean, we'd love to have you here. But I know we're not, I, I definitely not everybody's style. I get that. But if you're here today and you've never taken that step of faith and given your life to Jesus, don't leave here without Jesus. Even if you don't ever come back, you're here now. That voice rolling around in the back of your head, yeah, that's the spirit of the Lord pulling on your heart. Come on. That's G, like we talked about last week in the book of Revelation. That's Jesus standing at the door of your heart knocking. Hello. Let me in. Yeah, it's that simple. It's not overcomplicated. It's not religious. You don't have to walk an aisle. I know religious tradition tries to tell you you got to walk. No, you don't. Uh, the Apostle Paul didn't walk an aisle. He got slapped off a horse. You don't have to walk an aisle. You just have to take, according to the book of Romans, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. And so we made it very simple. We as a church family are going to say it together. If you're in the room, Say it with us. If you are watching online or listening, say the prayer. Give Jesus a chance. Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. For more information on Victory Life Church, check us out at victorylifeky.com. Thank you so much for listening.